What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome to another video with OpenXR and the Magic Leap 2. Today I got some really cool features to show you where we're going to be basically setting up the OpenXR Gaze Interaction Profile within Unity, also enabling eye tracking features with Android. And lastly, we're going to be creating a prototype, which is basically going to be using our eye tracking data to help with typing a passcode onto a virtual keypad. And you heard that right. We're going to be doing that with our eyes. Also, upon entering the successful passcode, we're going to be enabling a track post driver component on a simple cube and use the gauge rotation input action to modify the cube's rotation. All right, so I know we have a lot to do, so let's jump into my computer and start working on it. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna be controlling how we enter the actual combinations in here by using our eyes. So we're gonna have a timer and based on that timer, we're going to be basically selecting some of these buttons and then based on the selection, we're going to be entering a code and that code is going to be enabling the track post driver on these components. So what I'm gonna do to get things set up is we're gonna need to go into the build settings. And then if you go under build settings, you're gonna go into player settings. And this is gonna be where we're going to be entering the some of the permissions. So if you go here on Magic Leap on the very top, there's going to be a permissions area. And then there's going to be also what they call dangerous. This is basically sensitive information. So that's why they call it dangerous here on the category. And then also normal, go ahead and enable eye tracking. And then you're gonna also go into XR plugin management. I already have the open XR plugin set up. So that's going to be this area right here that is going to allow Android to run with open XR. And then if you go under open XR, click on this plus symbol to add the uh, gaze interaction profile. Let's go ahead and click on create and then script. And then this one I'm gonna call the gaze input manager. And this is gonna have two properties that are going to expose the position of the gaze and also the rotation. And also it's going to be asking for permissions for Android to be able to get data from our eyes. That way we can ask our users for those permissions before we start reading that information. That's gonna be one of the requirements. Basically creating an eye tracking device. This probably could go on the very bottom since it's going to be, it's going to be private. And then I'm also going to be having a bold property because we need to notify other components that the eye tracking permission was granted. Also the gaze position, the gauge rotation that we're gonna be capturing through this class. And lastly, the private variable that I just moved. So this is gonna be very important in here because we need to tell Android to basically tell the user that we are requesting eye tracking information. And then there's going to be all the actions here, the callbacks that we're going to be getting. This used to be a little bit different because Magic Leap implemented it differently and this is a new api so now you do magic leap that android permissions that request permissions to be able to basically ask for specific magic leap to permissions i was using a different one before and then that kept on giving me warnings so i just went ahead and changed that so on the update statement we're going to be basically saying okay if permissions has not been granted yet there's no reason for me to read the eye tracking information from the actual device from the headset but if it was granted, meaning that these callbacks in here, well, this one right here executed, that means that on permission granted callback came back and then basically we set this Boolean property to true. And if it was denied by the user, basically it's going to stay as a false on the Boolean property. And then we're also going to be printing this information, whether it's granted or whether it was denied, which is really, really cool. So at this point we should have basically eye tracking you know, permissions available, and then we can check to see if the device, the actual tracking, eye tracking information from the headset is available within Unity. And if it is, then we know that we, well, in this case, if it's not, that means that we need to read that information, right? So in this case, we have permissions, but we haven't really set these property just yet, these variable just yet. So what we need to do is we need to read it, right? So we're gonna get basically a list of input devices because the next, method in here is gonna require a list of input devices. And then we're gonna be passing in what kind of devices that we need. So we need information about eye tracking. So if everything works, this is gonna get populated with the eye tracking device. And then if it is greater than zero, which means that it was populated, then we're gonna get it from that list at the index zero. 
And then if it's still not valid, that means that we couldn't get it and we don't, we don't have a way to get that device eye tracking information. So we're just gonna be printing this in here. And then if we were able to get it, then we can check to make sure that the device is being tracked. So we can just get the property out. And then also we can do here a bitwise comparison. Basically it's gonna say has data equal has data and, and making sure that the position was populated. And then it'll do the same thing here with the rotation. And if we are tracking and we have data, then we're gonna be getting that information into the properties that I set in here so that we can access it from the passcode that we're going to be implementing next. And then we're just gonna be logging that information as well. So let's go ahead and associate this with the XR rig. You can put it on a new game object if you want to, but I'm just gonna put it right here on this XR rig. And we can just say gaze input manager. gonna go into the simple cube here and then just add a track post driver input system here you're gonna specify whether you want the rotation and position if you need both just leave it as that if you only need one you can say rotation only or you can also say position only so what I'm gonna do here is for the position we're going to be basically adding a binding double click it and then you're gonna get this T then here we can say I gaze to be able to map to that and then forward slash you can also specify the post and then we need to tell it what properties that we need to read. So we're gonna be reading the position. And you're gonna see that as soon as we enter, you can see that that's going to be mapped correctly in here. We're gonna do the same thing for the rotation. Just go ahead and double click it, press the T. I don't use the drop down because I don't believe it's available just yet. So I normally just type it in. That's what Magic Lib recommends. And then we can just say here, post. And then in this case, it's going to be the rotation. So. Once you do this, the way that it's going to work is this going to basically has mappings behind the scenes to the OpenXR backend. It's going to be sending us the, the gaze position and also the rotation because that's what I'm asking for. And then that's going to get applied to these objects, position and rotation. So if we were to run this as it is, the cube is gonna be right in front of my face, right on my eye, basically in my field of view. And then it's going to be rotating as I rotate my actual eyes. So just make sure that if you want to test it, I would only do the rotation. So I would only basically check rotation in here. That way we don't have that cube right in front of our face. All right guys, so for the next part, we're gonna be focusing on the keypad with gaze component. So let me show you how this works. So I have a shader already that I created that basically is going to allow you to fill each one of these buttons. So if I go into the prefab here and you were to basically access one of the materials, you're gonna see that it has this fill progress property that is exposed through the shader. And if I were to increment it, you're gonna see that they are going to be incrementing. So the cool thing about this though, is I can get some of the, basically track the time that I'm staring at each one of these buttons. And then based on that time, if I reach the maximum, which I'm also going to be creating in a script, then I'm going to be entering that number into the keypad. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, if I go back in here, go into the simple cube, and we're gonna be basically disabling this because I want this passcode successful action, which we're gonna be adding as a Unity event, to basically enable that component. So that's going to be basically our price for typing in the code correctly by using eye tracking. All right, so the next thing that I'll do though is we'll start working on the gaze passcode feature. That's what I call the script. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create it. This is gonna be gaze passcode feature. All right guys, so that was everything for this script. So the first thing is going to be the secret passcode. It's gonna be the 225566 code that we're going to be validating. Also, which layers we're going to be allowing to basically for people to look at. That's when we look at the buttons. 
This is gonna be the actual code that we're going to be displaying as we gaze over each one of the buttons. And then also the minimum, when I put it as one second, I think that is, you know, that is fast enough, but you can also increment it or decrement it depending on what you like. And then also the two events here that we're going to be executing, one when we have a valid passcode and also one when we have an invalid passcode. And then the private variables are gonna be for tracking different things. It's gonna be for all the different renders on every single one of those buttons so that we can you know, reset the filling back to zero. Also, we can adjust the filling depending on what we're looking at, the filling material that we're gonna be using, the tracking timer that we're going to be you know, keeping track of when they hit the one second mark or the other number that you use for this variable then we know that we can basically start checking to make sure that we can enter that code. And then we're also gonna have a field progress property. It's gonna be what we pass into the shader. And these two values are just basically for the shader. The negative 0.6 is going to be when the value of the filling is a zero. And then 0.6 is going to be when the value of the filling, in our case, is gonna be the red color, but you can change that as well when that's going to be at its max, basically all the way full. Then on the awake method, we're gonna be basically clearing out the display. We're going to be getting all the different bounds by passing in this tag. And then we're also going to be populating the core renders that basically have this tag associated with them. And then we're gonna get all the mesh renders by using link. Then on the update method, we're just gonna make sure that we ask the gaze input manager that the eye tracking permission has been granted. We're going to be getting the gaze position, the gaze rotation. We're gonna be getting, creating a new ray based on the gaze position, right? If we have the gaze right here, we wanna make sure that that is going to be the origin of the gaze of the ray. And then also the rotation of the gaze, which is really important. That way we know how we can rotate that ray. Then we're gonna be using a ray cast to basically go from that ray and then getting you know the information, whether we're colliding with any of those buttons. We're also going to, I didn't want to specify a specific distance because I want the buttons to be far and close. So you can change this if you wanted to. And then the layers that are going to be included in the physics, the Raycast collision check. And then also here, we're going to be clearing out all the fillings as soon as we start. That way we have everything cleared out. There's, I had some issues with, you know, how fast this was happening, so I decided just to clear all the fillings as soon as we get a collision, and then we can increment that filling for that specific button. Then we're gonna be basically getting the passcode number box. This is gonna be the object that we're basically colliding with. And then from that, we're gonna get the render, and we're also going to be getting the text. The render, again, is gonna be so that we can fill the right button, and then this is gonna be so that we know which number they're typing in. We're gonna be incrementing the our timer here, or tracker, by using plus equal the delta time. And then we're gonna be basically calculating our progress, also calculating the percentage based on the range that I'm passing in. So if the progress is zero, then we know that we are, basically the feeling is at the very bottom. So that's going to be this number here, the negative 0.6 flow. And then if the progress is 100%, then we know that it's going to be maxed out. So this method right here calculates that for us. And then also we're gonna be getting the, basically setting the flow by using this property, which is going to be that property that I'm passing in here for the field progress. And then I'm also gonna need to pass in the progress value, which is gonna be the percentage. And then if we hit the max, meaning that We've been looking at the button, you know, for the minimum, which in our case is gonna be one second. Then we know, okay, we deselected a code, so I'm gonna be displaying that in the actual logger. I'm also going to check whether I'm looking at the reset button on the passcode. If we are, then we know that we need to clear it out. Otherwise, we can continue. I'm also going to be clearing it out if we hit the max. So the max is going to be set based on the secret passcode. So if it's six digits, the six digits are going to be displayed, but as soon as we look at another object, at another button, we're going to be clearing that out. So this is gonna be handling, clearing it out. This is gonna be handling, resetting it. So we'll clear it out when we hit the max, and then this one's going to be a reset when we look at the button with the reset label on it. And then we also need to check the passcode combination here. This is pretty simple. I'm just gonna make sure that we hit the max. I'm also going to make sure that the code equals the enter code display and then just do a check with the 
secret passcode. If this is true, that means that the passcode combination is valid. We're gonna be displaying that information and also executing a Unity event action. And then if it's not valid, then I'm going to also display passcode is not valid on the logger and then also executing the appropriate action. Then we're gonna be resetting our timer and we're also going to be resetting the filling on the property, which is probably not required because I'm going to be clearing that out anyways in here, but I ended up adding it at the end just in case. And then if we're not doing, you know, if we're not colliding with anything, then I'm just going to set the timer back to zero. That way we just increment as we're staring at an object and not when we're not staring at an object. So it's always gonna be zero unless you're colliding, a ray is colliding with one of those buttons. So, and then right here on the very bottom, you can look at the convert percentage to range and also the clear fillings methods, which are, you know, pretty, pretty simple. You can look at the code and go through the code to understand that. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. You're gonna go into the passcode game object, and then you're gonna see that we have our gaze passcode feature script associated, but we don't have any of the values. So the secret is going to be in this case, 225566. You can change it to anything that you like. I just kept that just so that I remember exactly which number is gonna be. Also, which layers we're going to be interacting with when doing array. So if you go into the window area and you look at every one of these objects, you're gonna see that we have a box collider associated with each one of them. I also have a layer associated with them. So the tag is gonna to be to find them by using the script, but the layer is going to be for the physics collision. So I'm using the, I'm using the passcode number, so just make sure that you remember that. So if we go back in here, I'm going to be saying, okay, this is only going to be doing a ray cast with any objects that include that specific layer. So that's going to allow us to just keep performance as its best. And then also the number that we're gonna be entering is going to be this one, right? It's gonna be the one that we need to populate. So if you go down here, enter code display, that's going to be basically that. And then the minimum gaze time over numbers, you can increment this if you wanted to. You know, if you want it to be after three seconds of looking at an object when you activate it, regardless of the implementation, this code is going to, well, in this case, it's gonna be for the passcode, but if you wanted to implement it differently, you can use this property to do that. For now, we can just do it after one second of staring at each one of these objects. We're going to be basically entering the number here on this box. And then the next thing that I wanna do though is I'm going to do the on passcode valid. I'm gonna basically associate that with these right here, which is going to be having a track post driver. So we can go ahead and collapse this and then I'm just gonna go ahead and associate it with that and make sure that I do that one more time. And then I'm going to hit here the drop down track post driver, and then I'm going to basically enable it. So by default, this is gonna be disabled. That way we don't capture any of the gaze information and apply to the cube only until we basically type in the right code. So that's what this is gonna do. It's gonna say, okay, do I have the valid secret passcode? And then if I do, then I'm going to be going into this object and then enabling the track post driver. Well, the track post driver, it's going to basically getting only the rotation from our eyes. So these should start rotating as we rotate our eyes. So let's go ahead and test it out. So that's everything for this video on eye tracking with OpenXR. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned or show you through the tutorials, let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to subscribe because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more ML2 videos and also XR videos in general. Thank you very much, guys.